Example 3 in Section 821 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd edition. This is Jonathan Gardner. So um, we have uh, a drawing, basically. We we're going to calculate. Uh, kind of the point is, is that um, let's actually draw the B and E field. So I'm going to use uh, this, this yellow-orange for the E field um, because, you know, electrum comes from the word for amber. And I'm going to use this blue for the magnetic field. So if we have, if E points in the direction, so we say, let's assume that E naught vector uh, points in the Y direction. Okay, so the E naught wave, let's draw up the axis here. Y, X, and Z, and this is the point where you can start complaining about my sine waves. So it's going to go up and down, and I am so pleased with myself right now, and I'm, okay, my pleasure has left me. So the, the E field is pointing in the positive y direction, and then in the negative y direction, and then in the positive y direction, and so on, ad infinitum. And this this vector right here, this is the E naught vector, the real of the uh, the E naught complex. Okay. So what is the B field doing? Well, the B field will be pointing with I cross epsilon naught, and then I have a factor of one over C. I'm, this is an epsilon naught. This is E naught. Um, so we take I cross E field and then divide by C, and we get the B field. So I is pointing in this direction. And then when E is pointing up along the Y, well, you do the curl and it's going to be pointing in the Z direction. And so the, the B field, let's see if I can draw this correctly, is pointing perpendicular in the Z direction. Okay. And let's use this one. And this is B naught vector, or real of the complex part. And the important thing is the B naught vector is equal to 1 over C times the E naught vector. Okay? So for this wave, if we're given E naught, we know everything we need to know about the B field. And, and we know that they're going to be perpendicular to each other. And maybe I can make this more clear by drawing little um, right angles like this. Okay, so these are always perpendicular to each other. Um, e cross B will give you the direction of motion. If you're given E in the direction of motion, you start in the direction of motion, curl in the E field, and then you get the B field. So, pretty simple. Um, I, you know, this is one of those things that, um, hopefully, there's a sense of wonder that you have right now. That it, it's kind of amazing to you that this this field just at some points it's really strong at some points it's zero, you know. Keep in mind that this wave is traveling at the speed of light in this direction, so these bumps are moving like this. So at any point in the Y Z plane that you're at, you're gonna see the electric fields and magnetic fields, you know, increase in one direction and then increase in the other. So another thing to note as well is we're talking about a plane wave so any point along the YZ plane has the exact same E field and the exact same B field there's no Y or Z dependence so as you get further and further away in this direction the E field doesn't change uh, in this direction either the E field and the B field don't change you know if it's zero at this point then you know at Y equals 100 X equals the same number the E field and the B field are the same they don't change based on Y or Z um, all right uh, we're going to wrap up with some more observations. Uh, we're going to, uh, and then after that will be section 8.22. Thanks for your time. Bye.